I will never forget the expression on my young son's face when he figured out how to turn on my stereo. He was still in the crawling stage and I watched him crawl up to the stereo and with his little finger press the on button. <laughs> when the music fired up, he looked back at me with those big wide eyes and the most wonderful expression of surprise and satisfaction. He did it. He got the music going. Obviously, he had watched me doing this hundreds of times. And since he loved music, he figured out how to do what I had done. I got to see this expression of accomplishment, ownership, and pride in my older son and his younger brother so many times. When my boys were 8 and 10, their electric guitar stopped working. And they did some internet research and learned they needed to fix the jack where the cord from the amp plugged into the guitar. After a series of phone calls asking me to pick up solder and something called flux, I came home to the guitar all set up and the soldering iron hot and ready to go. And my boys immediately soldered the connection according to the instructions they had found. They screwed the jack connection back into the guitar and ran to the amp. My older son held the guitar in his lap and his younger brother plugged the jack in. When that first strum of the guitar echoed from the amp, the two boys looked at each other with amazement, excitement, and contentment. They fixed their guitar. I will never forget their expression of pride of ownership and what they said, Dad, Dad, we fixed it. We can fix anything. My boys are grown men in their mid-20s, so I don't often get to see as they create things directly, but I still get a texted picture of whatever project they currently have completed, or they will stop by and show me what they have done. That expression of excitement, satisfaction, and pride of ownership is still there. And I will often flash back to when I first saw that same expression in their childhood faces. The making of meaningful connections are so crucial to active and deeper learning and to who we are as the most amazing learning entities on the planet. This level of learning is achieved when the learner has the opportunity to take ownership and make their own meaningful connections. The ownership changes everything. The power of an e-portfolio can only be realized if the learner has ownership of the whole process, from choosing the e-portfolio platform and software, the look and feel, and most importantly, the content and how it's displayed. If you're using an e-portfolio within an educational setting, there will always be constraints. But the constraints shouldn't limit ownership and voice in key areas. My boys had constraints in what they could do in fixing their guitar, so they worked through the constraints and learned how to solve this problem. Asking students to use template-driven plug-and-play turnkey web applications, where they were required to dump content into pre-made digital buckets, will result in learners not using the ePortfolio outside of the course or program of study. They don't own any part of this process, so why would they continue this in the future? Recent research by my colleagues and myself has shown that ownership of ePortfolio process is one of the key factors in learners using these amazing learning tools beyond the program of study. ePortfolios have the potential to be powerful transformational learning tools, or just another instance of content regurgitation. Ownership of the ePortfolio is the determining factor between a learner dumping mindless content into a digital box or sharing the results of the growth and learning experiences that could change the world.